Hello, welcome to Wider News. I'm your host, Claire Steffen. And I'm your co-host, Samira Allen. Last Wednesday, Zeta Phi Beta held an event called Boobs, They Need Your Support for Breast Cancer Awareness. Those who attended were provided with many facts about breast cancer, including prevention. If you would like more information about any of their upcoming events, email Brielle McRae on the email below. Moving on with more Greek life, October 23rd, Kappa Sigma will be hosting a lip sync tournament. The event will take place in the Alumni Auditorium at 7 p.m. Proceeds will go towards military heroes. I may add, talent is not needed for this event, but it is for a good cause, so why not show up? For more information, contact Mike Cotter at the following email below. Maybe performing on stage isn't your specialty, but how about spectating st instead? In celebration of International Drum Month, the ISS students will hold a performance of African Dance and Drum Assembly last. The event will take place on Wednesday at 11 a.m. in the UC Atrium. There is going to be a workshop immediately after the performance. In order to attend, you must sign up in advance. The event is free. If you would like to sign up, contact Melody Bookholt with the email below. If performing is not your cup of tea, put your creative skills into carving a pumpkin. October 23rd from 6 to 8 p.m. at the University Center, there will be a pumpkin carving and decorating event. Numerous clubs are collaborating on this event, so come out and create the scariest, cutest, or most awesome design you can. Remember, Halloween is right around the corner. The Residence Hall Association is hosting an event called Haunted Latham on October 28th at 7 p.m. This event will fit every aspect that people look for in Halloween. Latham will look like a haunted house. There will be trick-or-treating and it will be also a party. All are encouraged to dress up in costumes. If you're looking for a scary Halloween activity off campus, then thanks to Pride Activities Council, Widener students are able to go to Terror Behind the Walls. This event takes place on Thursday, October 29th, and the students will be able to grab a bus at the library to visit Eastern State Penitentiary. Tickets are only $10. Hurry and purchase your tickets online before they sell out. We still have a few weeks before Halloween, so let's talk about how the homecoming pep rally went. On Friday, October 16th at 5 p.m., the student body showed their pride on Memorial Field. There was some free food, free giveaways, performances, and many activities. This was Widener's third annual homecoming pep rally and is officially now a tradition. There was also a golf cart parade that demonstrated some of the clubs we have here on campus. It seemed like everyone had a great time. I heard field hockey and our swim teams also had events last week. Let's see how they went. Over to you, Matt. On a day where they celebrated their seniors, on senior night, Widener Field Hockey lost in a nail-biter to Stevenson 3-2. The Pride started the second half off with a bang when Alyssa Buckley scored a diving shot to tie the game up at 1. Junior Colleen Riley helped the Pride tie the game up at 2 with a goal off a rebound. Sadly for the Pride, Stevenson's own Sarah McVeigh scored in the 68th minute to make the final score 3-2. Despite several close chances, the Pride were unable to answer. The Pride takes on Wilkes on the 13th. With football having a bye on October 10th, the Widener men's and women's swimming teams took center stage. The men's and women's teams hosted the Widener Relay Carnival as they competed in nine events against Stevenson and Wilkes. The men's swim team took home nine out of nine wins on the day. Sophomore Ian Gaynor led Widener to a first place finish in the 200-yard freestyle relay, while the women's swim team also performed very well in the event as they took home seven out of nine wins. Sophomore Christine Kunzler helped her team secure a first place victory in the 400-yard freestyle relay. Congrats to both teams and good luck on the rest of the season. Back to you, Samira. Thanks, Matt. Sounds like the swim team is doing awesome. Keep up the great work. Every year, students from the Sports Information Department work with the Philadelphia Eagles to ask fans to fill out surveys based on their experience. This year, Weiner's, Weiner TV's correspondent, Andrew Proctor, got the opportunity to tag along at the Eagles vs. Saints game. Let's check out how his day went. <laughs>
I'm Andrew Proctor here at Lincoln Financial Field for the Eagles vs. Saints game. I'm with the Sports Management Department of Wadden University and we're here to ask fans to fill surveys out on their um, experience and their fan experience. So let's go out and find some fans. Every year, students from the Sports Information Department work with the Philadelphia Eagles to survey fan experience. Each student is required to get 26 fans to fill out a survey before they're allowed to watch the game. I found it really challenging to complete. I thought it was going to be a lot easier than it was. I noticed a lot of people that were from Philly directly didn't want to pay as much attention. We got a lot of people out of state and even out of country, but overall it was a really good experience. After all surveys are collected and analyzed, the Eagles use the information gathered to make certain changes in the stadium to maximize fan experience. Andrew Proctor here at the Eagles game, wrapping it up. We finished the fan experience. We found that fans are generally happy with the Eagles in the Eagles stadium. So let's get ready for this Eagles win versus the Saints. Watch the game. Wow, that sure looked interesting. I'm sure the Eagles' victory made that trip even better. If you prefer riding over sports, there are a few opportunities on campus that may be right up your alley. On October 14th at 4 p.m., Denty Moore hosted a reading in Kapelski LC Room 1. Moore is well known for his work in memoir and literary nonfiction. His essays and stories have appeared in the New York Times and many more. The event was open to the public and it had a great turnout. Be on the lookout for next semester's visiting writer. If you're looking for more hands-on opportunities, Widener Inc. is taking submissions for poetry, fiction, nonfiction, drama, and the art. Make sure you include a title page with your name, email, title, submission category, and a short bio no more than four sentences. The deadline for submissions is Sunday, December 20th, so grab your work and send it over to the email below. That's it for today. Bringing you the latest news, updates, and events, Widener News is here for you. I'm your host, Claire Steffen. And I'm your co-host, Samira Allen. Thanks for tuning in, and see you next time.